guys, I hope you're all still well. So today I'm going to show you how you can make a vase. Um, seeing as I showed you how to make some paper flowers before, I thought it would be nice to make a container that they can go in. Um, and so we're going to uh, make this vase inspired by the work of Betty Woodman. And she is a famous female artist and um, mainly she paints and she also makes ceramic sculptures and a lot of her work is based on pot and vessel forms and looking around her home and finding all different patterns and bringing these into the work. So the first thing that you want to do is have a rummage through your recycling bin and see what kind of packaging you might be able to find. Um, so for instance this one here, um, this was a tin can, um, a cream cheese pot upside down and this was the lid of some kind of dip. Um, and so here I've got an old olive oil bottle, uh, some cardboard and a lid. And you can really play around um, with what you have to kind of create quite an interesting and exciting structure. Um, so I'm just going to cut this bottle, so you might need someone to help you do this. Oh, it's a bit tricky actually. So, there we go. I'm going in from the corner, I managed to cut it. So it's probably best if you get someone to give you a hand, because it's quite tricky. So I'm just cutting around the top. There we go. So... We've got this container now, and ooh, I've just trimmed it so it's a bit even. It's good if you can use a container that's plastic or um, metal because then you'll be able to actually put real water inside it. So then you could put some real flowers as well as paper flowers. Um, and I think this will be quite nice if this is on the bottom. And if you've got some cardboard, you could think about doing some kind of handles. So I'm just going to draw a handle on here. Think about kind of an interesting shape that a handle could be. And then we're going to cut that out. Like so. You can make it as kind of simple or complicated as you like. This looks a bit strange, but I think it will be quite exciting. Okay, so that's going to go on there. It's not quite straight enough. So that looks cool. So I'm going to do another one. So I can just draw around this so that then they're the same shape. And then we can cut this one out too. <laughs> Doesn't matter if they're not symmetrical. Um, it'll probably be a bit more interesting. Like this one, these are slightly different sizes. Okay, and then once you've cut out your handles and you've kind of arranged the rest of your bits how you want them to be, then, then you need to use some sticky tape to stick everything together. It would probably be best if you have some masking tape like this, as it's quite nice to paint on, but if you don't, then don't worry and you can use any kind of tape. So. I'm just coming in and sticking it like this and you want to use quite a lot of tape so that it's really secure and you want to do this all the way around so that it's really thoroughly stuck down 
doesn't matter if you get some kind of creases of your tape because that's going to add to the charm of the vase that you make. all down mm -hmm. like so and then once you stuck that then we can stick the handles on positioned it at a nice point. Ooh, there we go. I'm just going to stick one handle on for the purposes of time. So on the other side you want to tape both sides of your handle to make sure it's really secure. And we're going to tape at the top as well. masking tape then it's quite good if you can cover your entire assembly of packaging with masking tape because it's a nice surface to paint on but if you're just using um, kind of plastic sticky tape then it's probably not worth um, bothering with that so I'm just going to cover one side so you can see what it would be like. There we go. So, once you have thoroughly stuck everything together, and if you've got masking tape, you've covered the whole surface, you can then start to paint your vase. So to begin with, we're just going to paint the entire thing with one colour. Um, it's best if you've got acrylic paint, um, but if you've got poster paint, that would also work. So I'm going to go for some blue. And um, I've just got a plastic, old plastic packaging tray here, which works well as a paint palette. And now I'm just going to paint all over my vase and you're going to need to do this two times so that it creates a really um, strong colour. If you only do it once then you're probably going to um, still have some um, of the packaging like the label kind of coming through and we don't really want that. So you're going to paint all over it. Like this. And then once you've gone around the entire thing, you need to put it down, let it dry, go away and have a cup of tea or something, and come back. Then you need to paint another layer of the blue paint, go and have another cup of tea, and then come back. And I am now going to introduce one that I made earlier. So this one, it's had two coats of the blue. It's a bit of a different shape to the one I just made. This one is a tin can here. And can you have a guess what the, these two bits might be? So I'm going to tell you those are a milk bottle top. One of the plastic ones cut in half. And then... This was um, like a little Coke can that I cut in half. 
Um, so I stuck it together with the same way with the masking tape and painted over it twice. And now it's the fun bit, the really fun bit, which is to do all the patterns. So you need to look around you and spot what different patterns can you see in your home. So you might have a cushion that has lots of stripes on it, or you might have a carpet that's spotty, and you want to bring these patterns and shapes into um, the decoration of your vessel. Um, Betty Woodman also often paints a lot of flowers on her work, and she also paints other pots. So you might have some pots around you um, that you might want to put on there. So choosing a very different colour to the blue so that it stands out. Um, so I think I might go for the yellow. Um, so ooh, let's squirt that in here. And you might want to take a minute to think about it or you might just want to go straight in. Um, and it's quite nice to think about the shape that your vessel is as well. So I'm just going to start off by doing a strip of yellow around the base to kind of highlight that form. Like so. It doesn't matter if it's not that neat. Um, Betty Woodman's work feels very kind of expressive and alive and that's because a lot of her paint strokes um, aren't particularly neat. They're all kind of vibrant and she's kind of gone all over the canvas or all over the pot in a very expressive and free way. So I'm going to paint some yellow around the bottom of here as well. Mm -hmm. Over there in the corner of the room I can see a stripy rug so I'm going to take those stripes and I'm going to paint them onto the bottom of my pot. So onto this one. Doo -doo. Like so. And now I'm going to look at these flowers as inspiration and I think I might do one of them on the side in the yellow. So I'm going to paint it like this. When you're using your colours think about what colours go nicely together as well. Betty Woodman often uses really bright colours, so that's quite a nice thing to do. Ooh, looks a bit like a palm tree. <laughs> and then I'm going to do another one down here. But it doesn't matter at this stage if you don't like it, because the idea is that we're going to build up lots of different colours and lines and marks all over it. I'm going to just outline here as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to paint one side to make it a bit quicker. So, once you think you've kind of done enough of that colour, wash your brush. And you need to wait for it to dry. I've actually got a hair dryer. So you could use a hair dryer. And so then once it's dry to the touch, you can then do your next colour. So I think I'm going to make an orange. So what colour do we need to mix together to make orange? So we're using yellow and red. 
and the kind of brighter, lighter orange it will be if you use more yellow than red and then the darker orange it will be if you use more red than yellow. Okay, so I'm just going to go on top of the yellow with the orange. This is going to make it quite exciting. <laughs> and I'm going to add to these flowers. Like so. And I also want to get a bit more pattern on the go. Um, I've got quite a lot of spots that I can see in this room here. So I'm going to put some spots. And the idea is that we want to kind of fill up all of the empty spaces with pattern. some short stripes around me as well. I've kind of moved on to using a bit of red now. And I'm just keeping on adding all different marks until I'm happy with it. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, I think we could do with one final colour, so just wash my brush, and I'm going to use a bit of this nice green colour here. So you can be thinking about all the different patterns that you might see. There might be some kind of wavy lines that you've got in your house. I'm going to do a bit of green around the top rim and the stalk. If you've got different size brushes, you could use those as well because that's going to make it look a bit more interesting. So I'm going to do some green on top of the red. Hmm. So keep looking at what you're doing and thinking about whether you like it or how you might want to change it. I'm going to add a few more spots in here. But I think it's getting pretty close to being done. And the final stage is to then go over the top with a black marker pen to add in more detail. So I'm just going to dry it now. Is it the hair dryer? make sure the paint is nice and dry before you use the marker pen on it because um, otherwise you're going to get paint on your marker nib and then ooh, it won't work very well. Um, so looking at your pattern, I'm going to add a strip of black down here. Continuing to think about all the different patterns that we can do. And one here. So it's quite nice if the marker pen doesn't follow your paint lines exactly, as that kind of makes your work have a bit more energy to it. Okay. 
Sorry. And just drawing the petals on here. have a look at it. Oh, it's looking quite exciting. And finally, I'm just going to outline this last bit. And I'm going to put some spots around the rim. So you can really go to town. If you've got other um, marker pens that aren't just black, then you could use all different colours as well. So it's just making the most of what you have to hand, really. Okay, so there we go. I think this is finished now. And I'm going to put some paper flowers in. But yeah, if you used a tin or something made of plastic, you can always put some water in it and then um, put real flowers in there. So I hope that you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and that you're going to have a go at home and you're going to make a really colourful, exciting vase. Um, and really play around with how you um, use the packaging to construct all these interesting bar shapes. Cool, so I hope you're having a lovely time and I hope to see you soon. Cool, bye bye!